So my name is Tristan Geller, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Columbia University. And my research is um, a neuroscience research in animals. We are trying to understand how the brain functions, and more specifically, how we can, us mammals, learn and remember thanks to our brain region called the hippocampus. What was the most impactful finding of your research recently published in Nature? The recent paper that we published is a new take on hippocampal circuits. So the hippocampus, as I said in the introduction, is a brain structure that's, in, that's important for learning and memory. And yet, very little in, is known about the connectivity and how neurons are arranged in the hippocampus. So using a, a different array of, uh, of techniques, we try to discover how neurons are coupled with one another and how this coupling enables the selectivity of hippocampal neurons when animals are engaged in a behavioral task. I used uh, different techniques, rabies tracing, optogenetics manipulation, and I found that hippocampal uh, excitatory neurons, the pyramidal cells that have been studied for about 50 years now and were thought to be mostly not connected to other pyramidal cells or indeed having a lot of recurrent connections that help amplify the selectivity of one given neuron uh, by propagating through a subnetwork of interconnected and recurrent um, uh, subnetwork of neurons. Which, is, uh, which has been unknown for, for many years. How did Femto3D Atlas contribute to your success to publish in high-impact journals such as Nature and Science? So this, this microscope was instrumental in the, in the research that we've done in those two papers. Uh, just because we studied interneurons, and interneurons are those very small um, neurons that are sparse and scattered in the hippocampus and with traditional techniques, recording techniques, because those, no, those neurons are far less numerous than their uh, neuron counterparts, so the, the excitatory pyramidal cells, it's extremely difficult to access from those neurons and record from them. Uh, traditional techniques including uh, electrophysiology and more uh, regular two-photon microscope cannot probe and record enough interneurons to draw any meaningful um, conclusion on the dynamics, the collective dynamics of interneurons. But now with the Fento uh, 3D Atlas that allows us to probe interneurons in 3D wherever the neurons are, is extremely helpful in drawing a more complete and global map of how interneurons collectively are engaged during a behavioral task and how those interneurons can influence their target pyramidal cells. In terms of your research, what are the most important benefits of the FEMTA3D Atlas microscope? So it's been about uh, two years now that I've been using the Atlas. So this microscope is extremely uh, powerful in a way that it can access neurons uh, distributed in a volume. And so it gives you another layer, another dimension for uh, asking research questions and conducting experiments. It gives you literally another uh, tool in your arsenal to crack neural circuits and be able to understand how the brain uh, dynamics uh, are organized. Could you share which feature of Atlas was the most useful for your experiments? That was the chessboard uh, scanning uh, pattern where you can actually uh, uh, click and, and choose points in an X, Y, Z volume and record from those neurons that you've selected before uh, measurements. And to this day, I keep using this feature because this is exactly the, the kind of pattern and, and measurements I need for my research. What can you do with Femto3D Atlas that you could not have done with conventional 2D microscopes? This 3D uh, chessboard scanning allows me to record the interneurons that are distributed in 3D, wherever they are. With traditional two-photon techniques, so our lab is, is popular for two-photon imaging using more conventional resonance scanners, 
um, that only sets one plane, one focal plane in the brain. And if you do that, you only end up with a handful of interneurons that you can record from uh, in a given mouse, in a given session. Now with the Femto 3D Atlas, I can increase this number by tenfold and record up to 300 interneurons at the same time, which is nearly maxing out the number of interneurons I can record from in a given volume uh, in the brain. So this is something that's uh, completely new, uh, technology clip speaking, and that uh, I would have not been able to achieve with any other uh, techniques. Atlas can be used for simultaneous imaging and photo stimulation. Can you tell us about your experiments using this feature? The most challenging experiment is actually something I'm doing right now, thanks to the team, uh, the, the team of engineers at Femtonics that just installed a new laser uh, on our microscope. I'm now trying to perform a targeted two-photon uh, photo stimulation of single neurons that are distributed in 3D in the hippocampus and see how this photo stimulation impacts or what kind of in, uh, influence uh, effect it exerts on any other local and surrounding neurons that are not photo stimulated. So it's extremely challenging for, for a few reasons. One reason being that the mouse is constantly running and the brain is in movement. So you need to make sure that the, the neuron you target is actually the one you're uh, shooting at and, and not something, uh, a different neuron, which is due to the brain jitter and brain movement during navigation. And uh, it's also challenging because uh, targeted photostimulation has not been possible before um, in the hippocampus because of it's, it's extremely deep in the brain. And so I'm very excited that this kind of experiment can be achieved thanks to the ATLAS. How do you value the service provided by Femtonics? I've always been great working with the Femtonics staff. We've had a lot of interactions in the beginning, as I said, to accommodate our needs for our experiments, uh, changing, tweaking the software based on our needs. And our interactions were always great and, and um, successful. They've always managed to accommodate our needs. Uh, Femtonics is one of the most responsive company I've had the pleasure to work with. Uh, in our lab, we are quite a big lab now, and we have a lot of different pieces of equipment from multiple companies. And Femtonix is truly a company that cares about its customers. And our collaboration that we have now with our lab and Femtonix is, is great. We are never uh, waiting for their responses. They are always on call and ready to help us. Why do you think your findings are vital for the neuroscience community? So understanding the hippocampus is crucial for our global understanding of the brain. And the brain is obviously one of the most important organ in our body that controls behavior, uh, cognition, intelligence. So our research really focuses on understanding memory and how our brain can recall past memories to guide future behavior. For example, you might want to avoid dangerous situations and you might want to prefer going towards uh, rewarding uh, signals. So our, our ability to remember past situations to, to guide the future of our actions is crucial. So now we know based on previous studies, uh, clinical studies and, and uh, animal studies, that the hippocampus is extremely important in forming those kind of past uh, self memories, autobiographical memories. And uh, yet the structure of the hippocampus itself and how neurons are arranged together is absolutely unknown. So unraveling this kind of structure, inner structure within the brain is important to having a map of how neurons are interconnected and can mediate memories, form memories, recall memories and store memories in the brain. Most fellow scientists dream about publishing their work in nature. Do you have an advice for success? To, to never, never give up and, and be able to uh, be willing to put in the hard work and the hours it takes to um, make uh, impactful research. It's, it's extremely difficult, but it's uh, rewarding at the end to know that you can actually uh, contribute to our society by um, making progress towards understanding the brain.